now, the rest of the story. It had begun as an opportunity of a lifetime. Suddenly, it's a nightmare. Tom's company had sent him to a new town, had promised him a generous salary and a living allowance. When Tom arrived, he immediately found a lovely house to rent. And considering the allowance of which he had been assured, he confidently plunked down the required deposit, $5,000. But then the awful thing happened. On the very day that Tom had been scheduled to begin work, his union went on strike. Here he is in a new city, no income, no savings, and the sizable deposit he had paid could not be refunded. Well, Tom went to his landlady. She was a nice young woman in her 20s, and her name was Linda. And Tom explained to Linda what had happened, that he had no idea when he might be working again, but that he really did like the house, its architecture, its location. He wondered if there was any way that she might permit him to stay until he could start earning money again. Well, Linda was sympathetic, and yet she, too, was in a bind. She'd bought that house to fix it up for herself to live in, and yet when the cost of renovating it had proved too steep, she was forced to rent it out and move into the apartment above the garage. Linda loved the house, but if she didn't rent it, there'd be no way that she could afford to make the necessary repairs, and there were many. There was woodworking and roofing and painting to be done and mending fences and landscaping, and then Tom, smiling, interrupted. The situation was perfect, he said. Landlady Linda needed her house renovated, and Tom had nothing but time on his hands. And he, by the way, had done construction work, just this very sort of thing, and he loved it. Linda said she could not afford to pay Tom very much, just $7 an hour, but Tom said that would be fine as long as he earned enough to pay his rent so that he could live in this wonderful house. Well, the two of them shook hands, and Tom went to work. With craftsmanlike skill and patience, he performed all manner of carpentry and plumbing. He made electrical repairs, in addition to which he tended the garden, and he lawnscaped the yard, and he painted. Tom took great pride in his work indoors and out, and as the months passed, he came to feel that the house was really his. And when the strike was over, Tom began his real job, and yet he would continue living in that same house, as he does to this day. For the town to which Tom had been sent in 1980 was Honolulu in Hawaii. He had been sent there by Universal Studios to star in a television series. For Linda, the landlady, will never forget the day that a flat broke unknown actor begged to be hired as a handyman so that he could live in her home while waiting for a Screen Actors Guild strike to be settled so that he then could start work on a new television program called Magnum P.I. Of course, by now you know Lucky Linda's personal handyman as Tom Selleck. Only now you know the rest of the story.